Holding my breath. Holding my breath. <laughs> Loud masturbator? Nope. Octave masturbator? Nope. I'm looking for <laughs> lower clean. Where are you? There we go. Dry apes. Wet apes. Wait, 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 it's taking me a year and a half. <laughs> well, I mean, it's not easy. It's like that thing is like. I mean, it's like everything's got to give and take, right? It's like if you're if you're a total nerd, then you know, you know, <laughs> you're just like, yeah. <laughs> I mean, it's like it's taken me it's taken me a couple of years, but I mean, you can plug in and get a good sound. But my, my the things that I want are pretty specific, right? Oh, you mentioned about being lazy. So if I was to buy an active XP, yeah. could I download your preset? Uh, I, I put them up online like yeah. last week or something, yeah. right? Oh, so. Well, I mean, I think that's also a part of like this whole thing is like everybody's super protective of what they do. Like it's like job security. It's like I don't want anybody to know what we do, right? It's like I don't give a shit. I mean, I do what I do, and it's like I'm I'm pretty good at being me, and I'm pretty good at being anybody else, right? So I think that everybody else is the same. And I honestly, I just I really think music is cool, and if people can take. You know, if people can learn from my mistakes, I mean, there's there's the best thing possible, right? It's like having a kid too. <laughs> and it's like, well, what's your goals with your kid? I was like, I just don't want him to be an asshole. <laughs> <laughs> you know, and I've spent like so many years being an asshole that it's like nice to be able to say, hey, you might want to think about that. <laughs> that little that little thing there, right? But I think that ultimately, it's it's a. Uh, you know, I think it's like money, it's like knowledge, it's like any of these things. If you hold it too close to yourself, then essentially you're just going to get people that are going to be like like against it just because there's like this sort of like, you know, it's mine, it's mine. It's like, you know, it's just like, here, take it. It's like, here's, here's the preset. Here's how we do this shit. It's like, you know, and for me, I think it's also important like in terms of like social networks and all that sort of stuff to be able to be open about, you know, how I feel about it as well because there's this real like need I think from some audience perspective that uh, to believe that people who are on a one foot riser are like in some way more intelligent or talented or, or like predisposed to writing music than anybody else when it's honestly just like you know it's just circumstance and effort right? <coughs> you know, it's like I'm 40 right so I bet you there's a bunch of here that are like not right <laughs> <laughs> there it is <laughs> exactly exactly right so it's like man you got you know you got twice what you've already lived you know to like get to where I am, and if you're and if you're not better than where I am by that point, man, then you got some, you gotta, you gotta catch up. Right <laughs> like, I spent a lot of my years just going, well, in hindsight, that was incredibly, you know, that was one of the life decisions that maybe you shouldn't have made. Right? But I think that's cool, and I think it's cool to be able to like participate in music rather than like try and own it, right? Like, I like the idea of, I find for myself, when I did try and own it, I was like, oh, I'm privy to this, or that the special sound or whatever, then I spend more time, like, more effort protecting that than just getting on with it, right? And for me, I'm just like, look, it's sounds, it's tools, it's like, you know, and for me, just the, the, the biggest advice I can give to somebody is just like, you know, keep your mind clear, man, like, stay away from drugs, kid, stay away from drugs and alcohol. Just because, uh, honestly, at the end of it, it's like, the clearer the path is to your inspiration, the less time you'll spend second guessing yourself, right? Parties suck though, for sure, right? Mm -hmm. But, uh, you know, who needs parties when you've got pants like these? <laughs> yeah, oh wait, I turned it up too much now. So, what I often like to do, and I know this is like, you know, uh, an interesting way to conduct a clinic, right? Is I like to make my own picks. <laughs> I just get blank picks and scribble my name on all of them and then look at myself in the mirror and think, awesome. <laughs> <laughs> Often what I do when I'm sitting around my underwear watching antiques roadshow, <laughs> poking at my belly fat, going, oh my god, you shouldn't eat those Doritos, but you hate yourself. No, I don't. <laughs> Is, uh, I get like a sound like this, you know, lots of goo. Goo is very important. I'm a gravy man, actually. Actually, I've been vegetarian for 20 years, and people are like, well, how do you do that? And I'm like, well, all food is just a vehicle for hot sauce, as far as <laughs> <laughs> like, or gravy, right? So it's like, you know, people are like, how do you not eat chicken? I'm like, if it was chicken or potatoes or tofu, it doesn't matter. I'm looking for the ass reaper. <laughs> what are you talking about? Yeah. Right? Yeah, a buddy of mine just gave me a hot sauce called Ass Reaper. I mean, I can't wait to try that. Man. It's like, you know what I think hot sauce is? I'm going to get back to whatever the hell I was talking about in a minute. 
I think hot sauce is a way to like exercise fury without actually having to actualize it and then spend <laughs> two weeks apologizing to your buddies for being dick. <laughs> because I used to find it really gratifying to get mad, specifically with strapping, right? I'd be like, I'd be like, ooh, I'm mad at my dad or whatever. You're a dick, you know? Fuck you, you're the one that erased some files, you know? It's like uh, all the hostility in my world is now aimed towards you. And then afterwards, you're like, no, you're, you're just projecting. You're actually angry at the fact that you're... Uh, ability to confront really simple situations is tied up in like a bunch of childhood issues. So, sorry, bud. <laughs> so now with hot sauce, I find if you just like destroy yourself with hot sauce for five minutes, you're furious without having to apologize. Right? <laughs> like I was at home there, and a kid was running around. He's like, oh, 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 and, you know, and, my wife was upset about something, and my mom was upset. My sister was being stupid, and, and I was just like, so I ate some like. Dave's insanity or something. And seriously, oh, no. I couldn't even see. <laughs> <laughs> and I, it was the same feeling as being blind with fury. And then five minutes later, I was like, okay. And then eight hours later, I was like, grabbing my ankles and howling like a bathroom. <laughs> 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 but it's like an exercise. <laughs> anyway, before we're talking about creeping your ass here, I'm talking about Antiques Roadshow. And usually what I do, I like that show. I like, uh, is I just sit around and I just plunk around, especially while I'm having conversations with people, right? Because I find that the fingers and your mind end up being more aware of what the current circumstance is than you're aware of, right? And so, you know, I find while we're talking, just like what we're doing here, the fingers just end up playing things. And sometimes you're like, oh, it's like this or whatever, but apparently right now we're happy. Because it's like nice and sonorous, right? But I honestly, have always felt like my musical world is on autopilot. And I think that improvisation is a huge part of music, and I think it gets lost as well. I read this book called, uh, called Effortless Mastery. Somebody gave it to me. And there's this like idea of, uh, you know, why can you improvise and like, come up with things that are really nice and subtle or beautiful when you're on your own, but as soon as you're in front of an audience, you know, you're second-guessing yourself, right? And it's like the attention of it is, is almost like the distraction. And I think the whole point of that book, from what I can tell, is just like, well, you just have to kind of let it go. And it's like, none of it's important. No performance is important. No music is important. You know, the things that are important are, you know, family and friends and, you know, food and... Like, sauce. <laughs> sauce and, uh, so, I mean, I think that if you come at it from that point, it's like, you know, then your instinct, you know, you can trust more so than maybe you give it credit for. And I think that when I first started these four Devin Townsend Project records, record. <laughs> I remember thinking to myself, like, I don't know if I can trust my impulses because in the past they've led me to decisions that I've had, you know, complications in my life from. And then I realized after thinking about it for a while that it had very little to do with my natural instincts and it was more to do with the fact that I was putting things into my system that changed my perspective, right? Like drugs or booze or whatever. And I'm not saying that I'm against those. I just think some people are predisposed to be a lot more sensitive to them than others, right? And, I found that after I let it go, I found that just letting myself be, you know, open to the idea of like my uh, subconscious writing what it feels like writing, then it just became really easy, right? And even when you're performing on stage, when you're talking or, you know, talking in front of like a couple people or talking in front of a bunch of people, you know, I think if you can trust that you're like a decent person or if that's not your inclination, if you want to be like a shit, if you can trust that you're a shit, then it's going to come out in the way that it wants to come. Right? And I think that whatever role we're like, you know, assigned to play, is like, it's best just to be open to that and not be afraid of it. Right? And I remember when we were doing deconstruction, I remember, you know, I, I was just like, man, I don't know if this is going to be good. People are going to think of it as this, that, or anything. I'm like, well, fuck it. That's what it wants to be. You know, that's what you want to say, apparently. It's like, and then in hindsight, you know, when we were playing the acoustic show last night, we were playing Hyperdrive, and half of this song was like, oh, that's what that song's about. You know what I mean? But that was the first, I think Hyperdrive might have been the first attempt at just like letting it be clear and its intentions just kind of like come through, right? And then you realize while I was playing it last night, it was like, okay, well, Hyperdrive is about following it where it wants to go, right? And as long as your intentions and as long as your like, your goals in life are not to hurt people, then, you know, that's what your music's going to be. And I'm not saying that's like a good or a bad thing. I mean, if you want to hurt people, there you go. That's what you're going to do. You know what I mean? But I think the thing is, uh, you know, being open to the possibility that you're maybe, you know, more talented than you might think you are, 
or more capable of doing the things that you're afraid to do than you actually are, I think is an awesome thing, right? Because I found for myself, I was so insecure. I've spent my whole life, like, you know, my family was so passive, aggressive with humor. Paul and I were talking about this on the way here. It was like, you know, we couldn't express anger because my mother's father was an alcoholic and you beat her and all this sort of thing. And so she thought when she had kids, what she was going to do, she was going to avoid anger at all costs. And as a result of that, we ended up being passive aggressive with each other and our humor ended up being where our anger came out. And then as a result of that, you know, what we passed off as being humor when we got older ended up being like things that we had hangups about, right? I remember it was like, hey, ostrich legs, right? We're like, yes, <laughs> why don't I wear shorts in the summer now? <laughs> <laughs> but I think that's it, right? And it's like I was talking to my mother the other day, too, and she's like, oh, what did we do when we were kids that screwed you up? And I was like, nothing really. I mean, everybody does the best they can, you know what I mean? It's like, I'm already, you know, with our kids, you know, it's like I'm seeing things like, well, that's going to come out in therapy later. You know, <laughs> But what are you going to do? I think if you're doing the best that you can, then, you know, I think that's basically what you can ask for, right? And I think being honest as well comes back to music as well. Like, if you feel like, you know, I had an interview with somebody yesterday, and I was saying, why did you quit this certain band? And I said, well, because the other members of the band and I had the exact same life goals, and that was to be honest with the people that we were. Unfortunately, them being honest on their path and me being honest on our path just, like, made it difficult to work together. But there's respect there because you're both going at it from the same point of view. It's like, hey, I want to be me, man. I like to watch Antiques Roadshow my underwear when I can see it. Is it the English version of Antiques Roadshow? You know what? Just because I'm like, you know, I'm Canadian, it's like I like I like the I like the one that's that's from the states. I like you know the thing. Okay, here's the thing I dislike about the English one because the culture here is so much older and richer in North America. Oh no, I love it here, man. But it's like it's older, and so when they say something, they like, well look, here's something from. 6,000 years ago. <laughs> and on the American one, they're like, that's a million dollars! Yes, yes, that's about 22 pounds. <laughs> we're just like, we don't even have that! <laughs> on the American one, they're like, no, oh, here's like a, here's like a Star Wars signature, you know, Big Mac cup. <laughs> like, oh, we're retired! <laughs> I find I find that the uh, I find that the English one is like disappointing and I'm like, oh they're gonna get some for this. <laughs> when you say to it when English fans you say Antiques Roadshow, they think, oh my god, he's watching people talk about China and tables. Well, but I, I, okay, I'll tell you the reason I like that. I got some friends that are just like on their time off, I get very little time off, right? And on their time off they're like, Oh, we like watching dramas or horrors and I'm like, Why? In your time off, you want to impose that stuff on yourself? <laughs> when I got time off, man, I don't want to think about anything. Yeah. You know what I mean? I want to watch X Factor. And it's like, oh, this is stupid. <laughs> <laughs> like, it's great. You know what I mean? It's like, I like the guy with the brown hair, personally. <laughs> <laughs> and with Antiques Roadshow, it's a pale blue thing with like a real neutral theme song and a bunch of people mumbling about stuff I don't care about. <laughs> and so when I'm sitting there, you know, like on the internet, you know, like, you know, looking up dumb things like, oh, world's biggest frog or whatever. <laughs> like there's somebody in the back going, oh, this is a carpet. <laughs> like, I like that. It makes me comfortable. Right? Like, yeah. Anybody have any questions about guitar or like, you know, what it's like to be bald? <laughs> <laughs> anyway, how, how long did it take to make well, I started it before we got there, and he did as well. Like, I sub-mixed a bunch of stuff, and poor Jens. I remember when we got there, he picked up me and the manager at the, uh, at the, at the, at the uh, train station, and he just looked spent, man. <laughs> and, and I was like, how's it going? He's like, oh. And Andy's manager, he's just like, well, is it crazy? He's like, dude, this takes the top five spots in the crazy list of things that I've had to do. Because I'm really specific with it, right? And if I had had the time, I would have loved to have mixed deconstruction. However, I get to mix a live show, so I get to go for it with that, right? But there's so many layers, and it's like deconstruction was essentially made to be like a jigsaw puzzle, sonically, that puts across the fact that with a clear mind, I can control those jigsaw puzzles, as opposed to have them, you know, Crest in something like info dump at the end of Alien, where I was like, I'm done, ladies! <laughs> <laughs> so we did it, but poor Yens wasn't prepared for it, right? But he did a great job. He, you know what I mean? But every morning he'd come in, his head was down and everything. Right? <laughs>
Did, did you pick anything up from it? Because these productions are just amazing, aren't they? Yeah, well, I mean, it's like we're different, you know? It's like, uh, I'm pretty... Oh, of course. Well, your production is amazing as well, but... Yeah, I mean, they're different. I mean, yeah, he's, he's technically brilliant. Yeah. He knows exactly what he's doing. Oh, he's, 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 like, yeah. immaculate, mm -hmm. right? But the thing is, I, my, my personality is I don't have the same, like, patience, right? Like, I like, I like things to be, like, dirty. You know, I like things to be, like, gnarly, right? But, I mean, working with them, yeah, of course I picked up tons of stuff, right? But there are also things that were beyond me, right? He's like, okay, well, we've shelled this here and everything. And it's like, my EQ curves. I'm just like, <laughs> high, low, mid. See ya. And shelled the overheads because low end gets into the snare. You know what I mean? That's right. So, like, you know, Yen's, his technical abilities are so far beyond mine. That the thing I picked up from is that, you know, we both did, like, bar jokes, which is pretty good, right? <laughs> <laughs>